guys, I'm Tony Covington, and I have my co-host here, I Supreme, and we are on episode five of Brain, Beauty, and Bank, and we have the magnificent, the infamous Leon Frazier Jr. He is the founder and CEO of Frazier Foundation and the crossover wizard. Let's give it up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. How are you, Leon? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about you? Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year, y'all, too. Of course. So I definitely wanted to bring you on to Brains, Beauty, and Bank. You know, you, you've you been a staple um, in helping us uh, obtain as a brand, um, rooting for us and what have you. And we've also been a fan of yours uh, with your foundation and what you do for the youth, your basketball programs and your summer camps. So I wanted to bring you on to spread awareness on your company. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, first of all, <laughs> for having me. Um, y'all are like uh, trailblazers. So. Um, it's just an honor to to sit down and talk with you all. Love what y'all are doing. First, got to get kudos to y'all. Y'all are breaking like history with what y'all are doing. So it's it's just a pleasure to 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 you know be able to have a product that you all had and enjoy. So it's really good. So thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Like I was looking back at it, right? I was typing your name into our orders, and I was like, this man. Not only does he uh, does he support like you support consistently, right? Like from the yeah. very beginning. Yeah. And, and, and it means a lot because um, we see, right, the amount of stuff that you're doing within the community, what you're doing with the with the youth, and like this, like um pre pre recording, you mentioned you didn't want to coach again, um, but yeah. now you're back into coaching and stuff like that. It's like it's like um leading leading the youth and really supporting children and really um and being a leader is something that's like ingrained in you and you just can't turn it off. And we really do appreciate it because that's something I really admire about what you have going on. And we need more of it, yeah. especially like in our community, as you already know, yeah. um, we don't have enough leaders, enough positive leaders, right? We have people that has to reach um, through like Instagram and like music yeah. videos and stuff like that to find heroes when there's heroes around us walking amongst us. And we happy that someone like you is a hero walking amongst the people. And, um, and you're also a big supporter of Octane. And we, and of course, support you back. Yeah, it's, it's no problem. It's easy to support a company and, and you all because I can see what you all are doing. I can tell y'all are good people too. So, and the product is banging too. So, like, <laughs> wait, wait, till, so. wait till you get the next one. Man, I can't wait till <laughs> the till mango. The next I can't wait till the mango coming. Oh, um, man. So, yeah, Leo, but, when did you start your foundation? Uh, we started, this is our fifth year. Um, actually, this will be our fifth year coming up nice. um, this summer. Um, and we pretty much, uh, the first athletic training, uh, program or the, uh, the nonprofit started just, you know, with three kids. Um, um, I've been coaching, um, almost, you know, my whole life, um, since I left high school, I played basketball, high school, college, and had a chance to play overseas in Greece. But one thing that, oh, wow. um, was kind of always instilled in me is to give back to the community, um, for which I came from. So, um, I've been fortunate to have people in my life that, that mimic that behavior, um, growing up. Um, and I was a part of their organizations back then. So it was kind of an easy, natural transition for me to to do the same thing. Um, I relate to kids. Um, I love being around kids and I love helping. So uh, I think I learned a lot in my life, uh, mistakes that I've made, some things that I could have did differently um, throughout my journey. But um, to be able to overcome those and then be able to be in a position to, um, to give back, to help, hopefully help some some other kids, you know, not make those same mistakes and just kind of have like somebody to relate to. Um, yeah. I think the next generation is what we have to invest in, because um, if not, you know, we, you, you know, is is it's just the best thing to invest and make sure that they're on the right path to to take over the world when they get older. So, so that's my question, started. no, that's great. So my question for you is, who was your Leon growing up? Like, 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 like you, like you motivate a lot of people and like you give a lot of guidance to people. But who, who was your Leon as a child? Where it's like they motivated you to continue through those long days and through those long practices and athletics and academics and balancing both and then um, pursuing your dream of, uh, of playing basketball beyond high school? Um, a few. My mom, for one, single parent household. Um, I've seen the struggle. Uh, I've seen the strength that she had growing up and uh, what she had to endure. So that's my first. I'm a grandfather. Um, but as I got older, it was various coaches. Um, not a lot. Um, I'm, uh, I'm not a uh, I speak a lot and I don't mind being around people, but I'm real, real like my circle is real tight because I've learned, you know, you got to just be careful who you're around. But um, I've had coaches uh, that comes to name. Uh, Malcolm was one of my brothers growing up. Um, 
uh, Hubert Davis was very instrumental in my life um, when I was in high school. Um, and actually, one of the things that kind of opened my eyes to it is um, I actually, uh, my mom applied for a scholarship when I was in high school to go to one of his basketball camps because we didn't have the money to go to it. Um, and I was on a waiting list. And I was just hoping, like praying, like, man, please let somebody not be able to come so I can go. And uh, <laughs> the crazy part of the day of the uh, the camp, my uh, first year going, uh, they called me the morning and I was I was in there. And um, th that that yeah. feeling that I had of not being able to afford or, you know, my, no, my mom didn't have the, the ability to afford to pay for something like that is something that always stuck with me. Um so I just made it my goal to make sure that no other kid feels like that. I don't, I don't, I'm not in it for the money. I'm just in it to see kids succeed. Um, and you know, but there are, have been people in my life. Uh, like I've mentioned, Malcolm, my big brother, Hubert Davis, my mom, my grandfather, um, and a couple other people. But, um, for the most part, I've, I've took a lot of bumps in the road and I've learned, uh, how to, you know, overcome those, um, with the help of God. Um, so. Of course. Absolutely. Stay first. That's beautiful. Yeah. Definitely. Um, what motivates your work besides um, the children, of course, but what other avenues motivates you to, you know, go into that avenue of coaching and then segueing it into an actual corporation in a, in a 501c3? Um, so it started like I said, with three kids and I just was opening a gym, paying for a gym and two of those kids were my kids. So really one kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, um, Listen, we started octane with two kids too. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but, um, I think the, the consistency and, and, and just, um, seeing that the joy that one kid is that he, you know, him and his parents, they, they look forward to that Saturday or I think we was doing it maybe two days during the week in the summer. Um, so in the, in the joy in the kid's face, so I'm like, man, this might be something I'd be able to do. I know I didn't want to charge in kids for um, training and stuff like that. I've, I've just always been around basketball and my passion. That's my passion. That's like my calling. Like, um, um, I'm not, not trying to get off topic or anything like that. I'm, um, but I know everybody has their own calling. Like I don't have to be, in a specific place to know where my reach is and who I can impact. So I know being around basketball is how I can get kids to get on the right track and uh, to make better decisions. So um, after that summer, I was just sitting back thinking like, man, I wonder how many other kids would, would, would benefit or would want to come to something that's for free that you're getting quality information and somebody really cares about it. So the next summer I did it again and I kind of just started putting the word out and seeing if people wanted to come. So the next summer I had, you know, went from three to about eight. Wow. Um, and then I went from eight to like 15 to 20. And then this past summer, I had almost 30 kids. So just the consistency and, and just being able to, um, to give kids like that, like that, that's just my passion, just to, to give kids that, that feeling of, of welcome, the feeling of importance, the feeling that they matter and they value. Um, and it's like the, they, they eyes light up every time we come in on Saturday morning. So it's just a good feeling. I'm, I'll be tired. But I've been looking forward to it every morning. Look, every I morning. saw the videos. I was like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, yeah. so, so, like, my question would be, like, because as you experience the growth, like, when you went from three kids to eight kids and you started increasing more, what are some things you learned along the way to make the process better? Like, I got, like what are some adjustments you've made? Um. I think making sure that I'm, I'm on point with everything. I think when I, for the first couple of years, I was kind of like, um, kind of not sporadic, but I wasn't as organized as I should have been. And I, I learned that the more organized and the more you look uh, and you act on point, the more um, respect you will get, the more people will know that you're serious and you're about your business. So it went from being like something I was kind of curious about to see if it'll work. Cause like I said, I've been around nonprofits and I've seen those organizations, but um, that firsthand experience of, of trial and error um, yeah. is nothing like anybody else. So I would say the, the consistency, the preparation, like, um, being able to plan to make sure that the, you know, the kids are not bored, you know, the attention span of a kid, I got kids from eight to 15. So the attention span of an eight year old, like you tell, you talking about a drill and they, they jumping off the wall. So yeah, yeah. You already know. Yeah. So, um, just the consistency and, and understanding that you, you have to meet people where they are. Um, don't try to, you know, put people where you want them to be, but see where everybody is individually. Um, and, and I think once people see the connection, um, and the seriousness that you have, I think that allows you to grow. 
Um, my team has grown a little bit. I have volunteers, not a parent's volunteer. It was a lot of me doing a lot of stuff running around. But I think um, now we're in a place where parents are asking me, hey, do you need help with this? Um, they're coaching. They're um, bringing snacks on Saturdays and stuff like that. So it's just it's, it's amazing to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they all volunteer too. Like it's it's a great experience. It's a great thing because it, we're in the community. Um, I'm not in Durham no more, but that's where I went to high school, and that's where I pretty much been for the for the majority of my older life. Um, so th- for for me to give back to them and for them to be, to buy in into something like that is it, it's, it's amazing to see. I was gonna ask you uh, when when did you like you know when did you get to that point where you know okay I need a team. You know, <laughs> when, them kid, when them kids start, when them numbers start getting high, I was like, all right, I got it. But uh, I think the important thing is not to just get anybody. I turned a lot of help down because you could kind of tell people's purpose or the reason right. why mm-hmm. after you talk to them. And I'm like, when you start talking about money with me. I'm especially when it's talking about the kids. I'm like, you not, I'm not, I can't, especially I can't work with you. Like you want to make sure you put the right, like the kids in the right environment. Right. Because yeah. we have people that's go, that goes there with like ulterior motives. Yeah, they're not there. You don't know how like what how they're giving off to the children. Right. Right. And like, I want to go back to something that you said that's like really important. It's something that like me, I've been, I played sports my entire life. Right. Like I, right. I played football. Um, I was on, I, I did track, uh, played basketball. And um, the best coaches were coaches that knew how to tailor their their responses to the children, right? Like, like, right. like knowing how to relate to each person, yeah. what, like what makes them tick, right? Because one kid, you might can get in, like get in their ass and like yell at them right. because they're going to respond to that. And like, that's going right. to motivate them. Another one, they might shut down. Right. So, um, so like, I can definitely see when you reach like that many personalities, you're going to need some help and the, in the right help, not just any yeah. help, the right help, right. because you want people that can be able to continue to relate to the children and push them and make yeah. them want to be better and not make, not, not like not let them shut down, yeah. but also um, get them to get to a point where listen, I have to, I have to get better. It's not this criticism it's constructive, right? They're trying to build right. me up that like not trying to break me down. And yeah. I take some special people and, and I'm sure that like it was hard to find, but getting the parents to be invested yeah. is, is, is even better because now it turns from just you trying to, unite the community to the community building yes. itself up and now yeah. everyone getting together and getting on the same page and building a strong foundation and a message. Yeah, man, I a hundred percent agree with you. It is definitely about the right people because all it takes is for one person to, to shut everything down and, yep. and, and, and where everything that we've been able to build could go down the drain. So it's definitely very cautious of who will allow around the kids and um, the help that is able to pour into them. Cause it's very important. I think kids know if it's out of love or not. Like yep. kids know if you really love them or you're doing it because you're breaking them down or you're doing it, like you said, constructive criticism to build them back up in the future. So they know and they could tell. Definitely. So going from coaching and, you know, getting getting a team and then, you know, starting to grow your actual, I don't want to say clientele, but community of um, the youth, what made you go into uh, building an actual product? Um, to, you know, help the youth. Um, we made it for the, the crossover wizard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that started during COVID. So FAT was already up and running, but COVID shut everything down. Um, yeah. And I wasn't able to reach the kids at all. Um, but it's always a blessing in the sky. Everything that happened during COVID, the sicknesses and death is, is unfortunate. Um, but I just chose to take that opportunity to figure out how I can, you know, I, I didn't want to just sit around and not do nothing. Like I figured that was the time to try to figure something out. Um, so I just, one night I was in the bed laying down, trying to figure something out about training kids. Like, what can I do? How can I be creative to be there with them, but not be there with them. And the idea popped in my head about something that they could use their hands with for, for dribbling. And then I just woke up and I started writing and trying to figure things out, man. I spent so much money on just buying stuff, trying to make something work. And <laughs> And then um, I I came up with something very simple, but I think it's very um, it's needed. It's another tool that you could utilize. And um, I think one of the biggest fears I had was just failing, you know what I mean? And and not um, making it. But um, I'm blessed enough to have the support system, my wife, my kids, my uh, my immediate family to just continue to push me. And the worst thing could happen is it don't make it. But, you know, you try. So. Um, I ended up doing it. It ended up working. Um, I had some some athletes test it out. They hated it, not because it wasn't a good product, but it's so tiring, man. Like 
I do like five to five minutes of it and I'm done. Like it is it's it's very tiring. But um COVID definitely helped motivate me to do something with um myself as far as business wise. I felt stuck. I felt like I was idle and I, I just needed a new challenge and um you know that that's kind of how how it was created. Like I was telling Tony, um, cause good, like we were talking about the product and I was like, you don't know how important something like that is, right? Like you have like these coaches and like fathers that will like tie their kids hand, their offhand, well, their main hand to their side to force yeah. them to use their offhand. Like Carlos Boozer, right? Like yeah. every time he told the story, I remember Carlos Boozer. I'm like, and he's great with his offhand. Yeah. That's because he was forced to use his offhand, right? Being right. like, so having a product like this, it makes, yeah, it's tiring. But it's something that it's 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 interactive and it makes it better for you in the long run, right? Because yeah. if you are somebody like let's say RJ Barrett who's a lefty, they're going to be like, "I'm going to guard your left, and I'm, right. I'm not letting you go, you go left." Right. So now, right. what are you going to do? Right. right. So coaches like people that answer that like ambidextrous and be able to go with both hands. So having a product that gets people to practice with their offhand, tiring or not. It's gonna it's gonna work out in the long run, especially if you want to play beyond high school. When you got yeah. people that's game planning for you, that's gonna take away your strength, and now you have to come out with a whole new bag of tricks. Yeah, for sure, I 100 percent agree. Um, and it just you know it wasn't easy. Like as soon as when I when I put it out, and I like it was people just coming. Why wow, this stupid? This crazy? Why are you doing this? But I I think I, I when I heard that, I knew I was on to something. Yep. Um, and I don't want to do anything if somebody don't call me crazy. I don't, it ain't good enough. So <laughs> I, want, I want to hear the crazies, but I, I just, I just, uh, I, I think that consistency and perseverance will cure all. Like it's not going to be an overnight thing. It's going to be something that I got to keep grinding. And I got to keep, you know, pushing. I got to keep doing, you know, just grinding. Y'all know how it is. Y'all, y'all, yeah. y'all grinding. Like I, I see. And that's one of the things that like made y'all stand out to me. It was like, man, y'all grinding from the bottom. Like y'all, y'all ain't taking no for no answer. Y'all going to get it, and I think just seeing that, um, that that entrepreneurial spirit in y'all, like it, it keep me going. Like I see y'all videos, and I'm like, All right, I gotta go do something today. I gotta go do it. And, <laughs> and it's and it's friendly though. It's not like yeah. jealousy or anything like that. It's like man, it's an inspiration. Like it, y'all, y'all motivate me. You, listen, you you need that. You need people around you that's going to push you to be a better person, right? Like yeah. if your circle is not pushing you to become like better people, then you're not doing then you're not doing the right thing. Like I still have friends to this day where we are constantly competing with each other in a positive way, right? That's like awesome. I compete, me like Tony and I compete in in a fun way, in a positive way, right? Because we got we got a little chunky during COVID. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, got, got a little big, so yeah. we, like I was pushing. Tell about business. Listen, I, was, I was pushing two eighty five, right? Like, so I'm six three. Yeah. I was pushing two eighty five. Yeah, right? and like oh, I'm not used to being that big. Now I'm now I'm in the, now I'm in the two fifties again, yeah. right? And like going down to two forties, but like we were like, listen, like we looked at each other, like, listen, this ain't good. So yeah. we started going to the gym. So it, it turned yeah. to like. I'm, I look good. When I'm in the mood to go to the gym, <laughs> she wasn't in the mood to go to the gym. Yeah. But she'll make herself in the mood. Yeah. When she's awesome. in the mood, she'll come by. It'll be like 7 o'clock at night. Let's go to the gym. I'm like, I'm not going to no gym. I already worked out today. But you know what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like Now nah, I'm going to the gym because she wants to go to the gym. So it's like even stuff like that. It's not even just about the competition. It's, yeah. more, it's, it's more so it's about people pushing you, right? Yeah, for she sure. pushing you to do better. Like our son, he just turned 14 two days yeah, two days ago. Oops. Yeah. I had to look at the clock. <laughs> two days ago. And I told him, listen, you're gonna start working out. And I spoke to one of the trainers at the gym. And he was like, Um, how you want how you want to do this? I said, put him in a class with the kids, right? I want him to be with other kids that are better than him. So he can see where he needs to be and have and have someone to chase. I need him to have that chase and and know that just because you're not the best right now doesn't mean you're not gonna get there. Right. But it takes some work. Right. Yeah. So I, I want like we wanted him to be in that environment to be able to be around people that will push him. Yeah. And that's what builds and that's what builds you up. Yeah. How, for would sure. you, how would you describe your work style? Oh, man, I'm a grinder. Like I don't like if I got to do something like it's hard for me to sleep if it ain't done. Like uh, I'm I'm going to go get it. I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, whatever it is, I'm going to figure it out. Um, and a resource, I'm 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 real. I want to say I use my resources well, but I don't like I'm I'm one of the like I just figure I can figure it out and um and make it happen. And I think that's kind of just how I grew up. You just got to you got to do it. Um, I, I feel like that's definitely that's that's still us. Like we've, yeah. we've gained more resources, but I think we're so like 
used to figuring it out on our own. Yeah. We don't really tap into our, our resources. And yeah. I think it's also, um, candidly, I can say, I think it's probably a fear of, of, of being liable to someone. Yeah. Or, or being, um, um, held to someone. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, I'm, I'm sure eventually we will expand out of that mindset, but, um, I think it's going to take us time to, to get, to do, to get to that point. But no, I agree. And we're yeah. kind of doing it now, right? Um, we're, we're expanding slowly out of it because what our thing is like, this is a family business, like a legit family business. Like yeah. we got started when I got down on the knee and proposed to her, right? Like right. with the contract to Octane. Right. So we hold it very near and dear to us. Like when we first got the warehouse, guess who was in this warehouse with us building it up, putting the shelves up, yeah. doing doing everything. Our kids, right? Yeah. Us and the kids. So for us, it's like a, it's like a, it's like an extension of us. So yeah. we want to be careful with who we allow to be a part of that extension, right? right? So like, um, we we are slowly allowing people to, to really join in, but it takes some vetting, right? We, we want to yeah. make sure your intentions are pure because. Whoever, whoever we associate ourselves with will be guilty by association. Yep. So yep. we bring on a brand ambassador who does some sketchy stuff, then then they'll they'll associate that person with Octane. Then now right. we have to go back and backtrack and say, well, listen, we didn't know, right. but it's easier for us just to be careful who we let in rather than just like just trying to yeah. backtrack everything. So that's why like with you. It's like seeing the way you move, it was easy, right? It was like a no brainer. Like we, we looked at you for like five minutes, like, yeah, he good. He's yeah. solid, right? Like yeah. he yeah. We, we see what he's doing. Yeah. He's doing a lot of stuff with the kids. Like uh, you remind me of one of my high school um so someone I play high school football with, right? He's a football he's a basketball coach, I mean, up in Albany now. Like uh-huh. he does a lot of the same stuff. He does like he does like a lot of youth camps for basketball and stuff like that. And he was someone uh, he might see this, so I'm 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 gonna talk a little bit, but he was someone I'm surprised. Yeah. Became a coach because he was insanely talented, yeah. right? But he hated being coached, right? And I think what happened, he reached a level where he just probably failed and was like, "I should have been coached. Let me not let these other kids do the same thing I did." Because yeah. he could jump out of the gym. He was dunking at like thirteen, right? He oh, was yeah. already six five by the time he was a freshman in high school. So he was always the most talented person. Yeah. But he didn't allow himself to be coached. But now he's pretty much changing other kids' mindsets. To not be like him, he's trying to change for the better, and and Sounds um. Crazy. So when I saw you, it reminded me of him, and I was like, I see you out there doing a lot of stuff with the kids, and that's all I see him doing, and I admire that kind of stuff because, like, we need more of that. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. We trying, man. We trying. We trying. <laughs> what do you think are are the um, significant challenges that small businesses are facing today? Ooh, um, I guess the lack of information. Um, and that's uh, of what to expect. Like, you, you, I didn't know what to expect. I just was like, I'm gonna try it. Hopefully, it work. If it don't, I'm still like, you know, it it is what it is. But um, after you kind of figure out that it could possibly work, um, I think one of the biggest uh, challenges for me is just understanding the business of entrepreneur uh, or entrepreneurship. Like, you know, the re- the the contacts, the you know, it's all about it's all, all, all about relationships, like being able to 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 reach out to people that, you know, and that, that goes back to um, your character. And back 10 years ago, like those same people may be in different positions. But that's one of the biggest thing I know I face is just uh, just being able to understand what to expect. And, you know, and sometimes you just you just got to trial and error. And, and well, try to figure it out that you're that you're a risk taker because you started a product in the midst of COVID. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what would I guess you know what in this phase now would you consider you know being a risk risk taking? You know, is there anything that you're like striving for that you know is going to be potentially a risk? Um, I would say. So I I did try to do another product and it it was a risk and it didn't work. <laughs> it was it was a part. So it was an attachment to my product now, but it's it's um it was just so difficult to do because everything that I'm doing I'm doing myself. Like I'm not a, a engineer, or architect, or anything like that. So I'm in mm-hmm. the I'm in the garage with a uh, with a uh, saw trying to make stuff and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, that ain't work or whatever. But I did try. It didn't work. But um, I think right now I'm just trying to more get it out uh, more. Uh, and I think the risk that that I'm 
not really scared, but the risk that I'm, I would say that I'm hesitant to take is just that, that, uh, I guess, turn it down or, or, um, failing, I guess it just boils down to failing again. Like I've, I've hit a, return. yeah, like I, I've hit the wall of getting out there and, um, and it's doing okay. Like I'm, I'm making sales and stuff like that, but it's just another step that I got to take. And I, it's, I just have to reach out to more people and, um, and get it out there a little more. And I think for me, it's just that, like, like y'all said, I'm, it's hard to reach out to people because you don't want to be let down. You don't want to be tied to people. And it, it seems like nowadays when you reach out for something, it's always something expected in return. It's not that genuine. Like I got you because I'm, you know, people have relationships, but you, you just don't want to use all of them because all of them aren't good. Um, to, you don't know what it comes with. Yeah. Yeah. So um, right now it's just getting out there a little bit more, um, more TV as more, you know, active on social media. Um, just getting that groundwork like y'all doing y'all out there pushing y'all product y'all getting in those stores and stuff like that so when i see like i gotta build that up like i have that natural thing but like seeing y'all do it y'all going to these places and and putting your product out there is definitely motivating um and that's one of the things that i'm working on this summer is just getting out there and people tell me no they tell me no but um the, not being scared of the no and, and continue to go no, yeah, you're right. And I, and, and so something I always think about, right? Like, um, if you go back and like watch Shark Tank, you'll see, um, some products that people that the host called crazy or just yeah. didn't really believe in. They turned, some of them turned out to be million dollar products, right? Like they could yeah. be, like they turned out to be really useful and they were proven wrong. So you can be told no, but there's always those products out there that people called crazy yeah. or didn't see any benefit in. Until you show, until you show them what the benefit is. Yeah. Like for us, we're we're doing great things. Um, at least at least that's what we're, like what we're being told. Right. But we were told no a lot in the beginning, right? Like there were people who who didn't want our product in their gym. There were people who weren't replying to the messages. But we kept pushing, and then we started getting some crazy attention. And those same people are now calling to get our stuff in there yeah. because they see the value, right? Because we yeah. created. We created the value, right? Yeah. Um, my Tony, my fiance, she does a great job at marketing, right? Like all of the marketing, she does it herself, yeah. right? Like, um, like I make clip videos and stuff like that, but she does a great job at putting marketing materials together. When we right. go to events, um, we do really well at working a crowd because that's how we we look at it. Like we're the faces of our company. Yeah. We're going to go out and we're gonna, we're going to work that crowd. We like we never sit down. Like yeah. I like I challenge anyone to find a video or a picture of us sitting down at any of our events. Like we yeah. uh, we move and we work in the crowd. Like one person's talking to these people, someone's talking to those people. Yeah. We're we're giving out samples, we're taking pictures, we're doing all of these different things because we're right. engaging with the people. We're right. showing that we're not just some CEOs or just some owners of a company that's just um that's just like trying to get a buck. We're right. trying to connect, right? right? And I think the more we can the more people we connect with on a personal level and like it's so on a general level, the more interest we get from everyone else because they see, okay, these are, these are real people. Yeah. Cause eventually what's going to happen is the people that told you no are going to come back to you. They're going to yeah. say, listen, you know what? Your product is actually pretty good. And then that, now it's your turn to be like, yeah, yeah I'm good. I'm like, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm good because I don't know what you're going to do with my product. Right. You didn't want it. When yeah. I was trying to tell it to you before, rather than hearing me out, you just like shut me down. Right. Yeah. So now it's like, do I give it to you? You put it on the back of the shelf, right? Yeah. Are you are you going to mark it up? Right. Are you, are you trying to mark it up, and now you're going to make me look bad because, like, I don't like you. You just don't know what yeah. the, like what their intentions are. So, yeah. what, so rather than figuring out, that's now it's your turn to be like, okay, you show me who you were. Yeah. Now I'm going to rock with the people that's yeah that that wanted to see me grow. Right. For well, sure. Segueing off of that, how do you feel? How do well? How do you deal with the the fear and the doubt of? you know, being turned away or not like, you know, reaching, I guess, going to your the fullest potential of outreach. So I'll give you an example. Um, our fear sometimes is making these um, investments of going to places with knowing that we may not make no money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah. like, how do you, how do you like deal with that fear and that doubt? Um, with crossover wizard or, mm -hmm. um, so I just go like, I'll, I'll do it. I'm, I'm okay. Cause my thing is not about the money still. Like, um, I'll go. And if I don't make any money, that's fine. 
Um, but the fact that people see me out there and people like, hey, they especially around this area, like I'm all, I always have my merchandise on. I always have my brand on. Um, so people are able to identify. But I just I just plunge at it. Um, right. I try not to be fearful. I, I do have worry. So my wife, you know, we talk, we sit and talk and, you know, I tell her, but she's like my, my other motivator. She's, she's, she's pushing, like, just do it, just do it. Um, yeah. we talk through some things, but, um, I'll, I'll plunge, I'll plunge at it. And if it don't work, I'll figure out, I'll regroup and figure out what I did wrong and, and try it again. Um, so when I say that I'm, I'm fearful, it's not that I don't, I don't take those chances. It's just in the back of your mind. You're like, what yeah. if? And and exactly. I think yeah that that what if moment is kind of what I try to stay away from because I could cause you to to lose out on a lot of opportunities because you're just scared and nervous and idle in that moment. Um, so, but I do have those same fears. Like I've been to AU tournaments. I've I've I got my my TV. I got my uh, my promo video. I got my banner. I got all the stuff set up, and I'm going out there. And you know I'll pay for a vendor fee to sit my stuff out there. And sometimes I don't make no money, but. I look at it as like those people walk by still seeing my product. They still see what it does. So didn't at some a, point. Didn't you have a, um, an ad on, um, was it Roku? Um, we was on, uh, was it Time? I think Spectrum. Spectrum. We was on Spectrum. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. was on Spectrum, local in the area. And that was one of those things I planned that too. Cause I'm like, man, is it good enough? Is it like, I'm like, man. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, man, who else got, could say they had something on TV and exactly. their product on TV. Yeah. So like, I, I kind of, like I said, my support kids, my wife, my mom and sister and them, like they always good at like, man, you're you're doing something like it's OK. If it doesn't work, it's OK. You're going to be all right. So, um, you know, that that's that's I, I don't care if I fail, I fail. But people know I'm going to try. Like, that's one thing I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have planned for um, the youth summer programs this year and uh, crossover with her? Like, what are your plans for this year? So for Crossover Wizard, I plan on going into stores. Like I'm going in, I'm talking, I'm going in with my product and talking. Like you can tell me, no, I'll walk out, call the police on me. I ain't going to do nothing crazy. But, I, 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 <laughs> but I'm going in with my product. I ain't taking it. Like I'm, 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 I'm not going to use caution. Are you, sure, or, are you trying to hit like, you know, your um, big box stores, like your Targets, your Walmarts, or like um, your smaller, your smaller stores that are like, um, there are chains like um, what do you call um, so like like Michaels like, or Five Below or Ross and stuff or, like that. Like any of them, I, who, yeah, really, any of them. I don't care who it is. I, I go in there and um, I think the, the one thing I do got to work on is my packaging for that type of um, display. Um, just being able to hang something out or you know that that type of thing. But that's my plan this summer is to have something where I could go into a store and say, hey man. You know, this is, you know, these are my numbers. This is what it's doing. Yeah. This is our buzz and this is what it does. And what do you think? Um, and, you know, I know most of the time they're going to say, you know, you got to email corporate. You got to do this and that. But at least those store managers will see my face and I'll keep shopping in there with my apparel on and looking at them like, hey. You know. Exactly. Ask them to yeah. do pop ups mm -hmm. at the location. Like, hey, let yep. me just do a demonstration. Yes. Uh, Look, I, I point, I'll point out every different scenario to them. Like, look, have your, your when's your buyer coming here? Let right. me do an expose for your buyer. So, yeah, yeah you, you got to pull out all the avenues because people will, will find a reason to say, yay, yeah. yes or no, or what have you. But it's more so, how is it, how the, how is it proposed? Yeah, you know, for sure. So, for sure. And then with what, uh, with that, the the plan this summer is to expand, like. So I think I'm running into a dilemma now where my gym space might be too small. Like my first thing, I'm like, uh -huh. I, don't, I don't want, like, I ain't got enough, like it's two kids in here. Like I got this whole gym and we ain't got, but now it's like, I don't have enough space for the kids. Like we had almost 30 kids when we did the, um, the winter program and it was a gym full of kids. We had to do three teams. And, and, and um, so I think I'm going to end up maybe after this year trying to find a different, a spot the goal is to get my own facility but this that's is when you, this is when you tap into the school district yes and go, and go for them grants <laughs> but you know the crazy part about it is it's it's hard to get in there and the people that you think want stuff that the services that uh, that we we do mm -hmm. it, it's 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 a totally different situation when you when you sit down uh we we partnered with Warren county uh we had a program that we reached um youth that had incarcerated parents mm -hmm. um and we did a program and it was good and I, I don't know what happened but when it came time to you know renew 
Um, they had a change in leadership in in the county, and they they didn't come out to see what we were doing. They they told us, you know, we'll check out what you're doing. But is it, you would think that people are looking for programs like like this, but it's it's such p- political and who you know. And I'm more of like, is it for the kids? Right. If it's not for the kids, I don't want to be a part of it, and I'm not gonna bite my tongue. Um, if it's if it's speaking up for the kids that need it, because um, we're trying to break habits of kids that their parents are going to jail. Yeah. Right. Um, and we don't have any programs that relate. Now you do have programs, but those programs those kids don't want to go to because the people that are leading those programs don't relate to the kids that's there, so they don't even want to be there, so they can't receive the information that you're trying to get. But I remember have, the boys and girls clubs and and like yeah. the CACs where yeah. you know, they have the. They'll, they'll do the lock-ins and they'll yep. do like Friday night pizza nights and all that. Like, yeah, come come get your kids before eight o'clock. You know, yeah. like yeah, the YMCA's, the YMCA's, YMCA's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what what happened to those? I don't even hear about them well, anymore. Well, they still have them, them, but it's not it's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. It's, it's not politics same. and people really caring about uh, if it doesn't make dollars, doesn't make sense. It doesn't yeah. make sense. It doesn't make dollars. Like yeah. like, like people are thinking more with their pockets and not. That's not like less about what's going to guide the youth the right way. It's the same way yeah. you can think about teachers, right? Like there's yeah, no way sure. in the world why teachers should be the one of the most underpaid professions with all they have to deal with. Right. But once again, like that comes with the politics and it comes yeah. with um where, where they where they put their values, right? They put their yeah. values in the wrong areas. So you have yeah. these people that's not thinking about the kids. Because if you thought about it, if, if they think about it, you're talking about reaching children who have parents that are incarcerated. Right. So you're trying to get them to see that there's other ways to do there's there's other ways of doing things. Yeah. And they're like and they're stopping it, knowing that you're trying to stop the um the transition of them becoming who their parents are, right? Because yeah. you, you want to show them a different life. Yeah. But you want to show them something different. And like they can't even get on board with that. Yeah. Right. So, and some yeah. people are just like that. Yeah. And that those when you just like, you know, you brush it off, I brush it off and then yeah. I just keep serving the people that, that want to be serving the, you know. That's, I think that's kind of why I do a lot of things on my own. So I don't have to rely. I know that's why um, when I started fat, I said, I'm not going to, I told God, I said, as long as you're able to bless me with the uh, the money to fund and take care of these kids, mm. I'll continue to do it. Cause I, I, I don't mind reaching out and I've had a, a grant or two before, but it just comes with so much other stuff that I would, if, if it was one of those situations, I wish it would be with the right people right. that right. understand and not just about, Hey, I'm giving you this. So this is what you need to do for me. Cause that's, is is it it takes away from what the intention of the of of you know what we're trying to do yeah. is so, it, it brings sure. down the morale of it all yeah for sure what do you what qualities do you think um uh every entrepreneur should possess oh consistency <laughs> <laughs> dedication patience um and i say patience i don't mean to not do anything but i mean to not expect anything overnight um, I read a lot of, uh, I listen to a lot of motivational, uh, speeches and quotes. And, um, one of the things I I got from it is like, it's going to take 10 years for your, for your brand to get where, or for your business to get where you want it to be. And that's what I got in my mind. So I don't look to, I'm not looking to make any money first for my, for my nonprofit, but with crossover wizard, I'm not looking to get rich overnight. Cause I don't want that, that fast money. I want that money where people see it and recognize it and say, you know, he's really cares about his community. He really cares about what he's doing. He has a good product. And then those people stand behind. It's going to take some time. For some reason, we we late to the party all the time. And our people yeah. be like, they'll support you to a certain extent. And then when they see that success coming, they you be like, well, you was posting me every day the other time. And now you ain't. So, but I, don't, I, don't, it's hard to, I ain't going to get into that. But um, that you, you, third word you said, patience. Um, oh, yeah. You, we lack that. Our people lack, like, like, lack the patience, yeah. the patience and the guidance, right? But, um, but a lot of it really has to do with patience, right? Because yeah. they want, if you think about how, like, how money is made, especially like in like the like the urban or like impoverished communities, yeah. it's all that like quick money. It's not they, they, like they don't think if I put, um, like, if I buy a certain stock right now, where it's going to be in ten years, because they're thinking about how they're going to eat tomorrow. They're not tomorrow, thinking about right. how their kids are going to eat in ten years. Yeah. Right, but but if we were ingrained to think beyond tomorrow, I think into well today and tomorrow, I think our people will, will be a lot better off. So having a ten year plan, it may sound long, right? And um, it's not that you're when people say that you're not going to make any money before ten right. years. It's right. just you're not going to be at a point 
um, you're not going to be at a comfortable point until 10 years. And honestly, yeah. I, w- I feel like no one should ever be comfortable. Right. I feel like you should never be comfortable. Right? You should yeah. always keep upping your upping your um, your wants, your needs. What makes you happy? You should always keep like increasing, yeah. increasing your demand on yourself. Right. Because yeah. the, mo- the moment you're, moment you're satisfied, that's the moment yeah. things go bad. Right. You hear those right. stories where like people will work for like 75 years. Right. Yeah. They retire. And when they turn 76, they die. Yeah. Because their purpose was working. Yeah. The moment they have no purpose, they they died off. Yeah. And a moment you don't a moment you don't bring purpose to your business, your business will die. Yeah. Like like that's the way I look at it. Yeah, I agree. I I, I found myself in a good place by being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Like I could be in an uncomfortable situation and and, and figure out a way to get comfortable. And I think, like you said, that's growth. Like you, I, I don't ever want to be in a place where I can sit back and say, "Well, maybe when I retire, when I get older, or something like that." Where I can say I made it, but I, now I'm young. I got energy. Yeah. Um, and what I'm building, I'm not even if if I don't get where I want to get, I know I'm putting my kids in a better position to get them to where they'll be able to take and go way further because I didn't have any information that I have, and my mom mm-hmm. wasn't able to give it to me. So I look at my generation as my mom got me to a certain point, certain point. I'm going to get my kids to a certain point and then my kids, you know, and, and just keep building that way um, because it might not be my hopefully it is. And hopefully everything that I'm working for and grounding for right now, I'll be able to see it in fruition. But if I'm not, I know I'm putting my kids in a better situation that they'll be able to have generational wealth, too, because that's all I'm trying to do it for my kids and to make sure that they're in a better spot. Um, it's so, it's think- so funny you just said that because I was I was literally thinking that that same thought the other day, like, man, I hope I'm here to see it. Yeah. See it in see it in fruition. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like all this, you know, like like um getting this warehouse and having my, my grandmother lives in Chicago and like seeing her walk in my warehouse and it was it, you know, we I'm from Mississippi, small town, five thousand yeah. people. Small okay. town, like like family dollar, sunflower, the pig <laughs> small town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And seeing Seeing her walk through my warehouse, like, oh my god, like, yeah, my grandmother is walking, walking through my warehouse. So it's, yeah. it's one of those. It may seem small to to the masses, but when you're when when you know where you come from, like this is a a, a part of that journey of breaking that generational curse, and um, yes. and I'm happy that she got to see it. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's it's. And and it, it brings me to my next question. Like, where do you see, and not just um, your foundation, but where do you see a uh, crossover wizard in the next uh, five years? Um, I want to eventually be a, a household name. I want to be a household uh, na- brand. Um, yeah. Not just stopping with the basketball tool, uh, ladders, all type of basketball equipment. I want to have my specific niche in basketball because that's what I love. I don't want to do anything just to do it. Like, if I'm going to do it, I want to be passionate about it, understand it. And, and and all that so um that's my goal for for crossover wizard um for fat is to i want i'm, I'm gonna get my own facility like i've been speaking that for a while and i'm gonna yeah. get a facility where it's gonna be free for kids um and i have my land for it and all that so that's my goal for the next five years is to, to have a gym so you know if kids want to come play basketball at 10 o'clock at night cut the lights on and go have at it so you can stay off the streets exactly so that's, that's pretty much what so before so before we wrap this up, right, we gotta have a little bit of fun. Okay. All right. Now nah, we're gonna go sports movies. Okay. Come on, give man. Me, you know me. I don't know no sports movies. You know Coach Carter. Like you know, <laughs> you, you know yeah. something. Yeah. Give me give me give me uh give me that one sports movie that every time it's on you you can't turn the channel. No matter how uh, many times you watch it. I gotta get sure it's gotta I I can't go on. It's gotta be a but it's a bother give, give me a couple. Uh, above the rim, loving basketball. Um, <laughs> okay. He got, game. he got game. Yeah, I'll say them my top three. Like anytime them come, I love Chris Carter too. But he's at above the rim first. Yeah, for sure. See, see me, see me. I'm more. I'm more football. But for me, it's uh, it's uh, remember the Titans. That was good. That was good. So, and ironically, I actually lived down the street from that high school when I was living in Virginia. Oh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even know it until like like a few years ago. I saw. I kind of feel bad, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was it was yeah. So um, don't and like listen. Don't laugh. Right. This is like this oh. is like my childhood movie. It's stupid, but I still watch really? it. 
six men. Nah, oh, no, six that's, man. A good, that's a good one. Yeah. I thought you were about to say Rudy. No, no, no. no, no. Nah, 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 re- nah, remember the Titans? Remember yeah. the Titans, six men, and like Coach Carter. Right? Okay. Like, 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 those are my movies. And, like, we, should, we should make the kids watch Rudy. <laughs> nah, I, would, I make them watch Love and Basketball for Rudy. I mean, we're not even going there. We, who, like Hoosiers. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Leo, good, what would you tell your um, 13 to 15 year old self listen listen mm. to your elders and um grind just don't don't take it for granted don't take anything for granted listen to your elders and don't take anything for granted what supporters would you like to thank Say again. Which supporters in your world would you like to thank? Um, my family. First of all, my wife, my uh, mom, my kids. Um, but outside of the household, um, first thank you all. Y'all, y'all be posting my stuff too. I'll be saying y'all. I appreciate all the love <laughs> and reports that y'all be doing. Um, Going thank right. y'all. Yeah, for sure. Um, just the people that 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 believe when I when I brought any ideas, whether it was for Fraser Athletic Training. Or for crossover wizard, the people that genuinely care. Oh, shout out to uh, Mashaya, Mashaya McQueen. She was one of the first athletes um, that you know I, I trained her. She's in college at Saint Aug right now, HBCU out here in North Carolina. And I okay now. Yeah, and she's a great person, man. She 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 from the jump. I I showed her what it was, and you could you could tell people's vibe when you tell them and you try to talk to them about something. And and she never asked for anything. She never questioned anything. And she was like, I got you. Um, because she trusted me and trust my my yeah. basketball development skills. So, um, to the people that that endorse the the ambassadors, Tim, um, Shia, Andrea, she's at Livingstone College, another HBCU, um, right. and all the supporters, the colleges, the AAU programs, the uh, high schools that that use the crossover wizard. Thank y'all for y'all support. I thank each and every one of y'all and everybody that's donated to Fat. You all were the biggest contributors to um, Fat. Uh, to date, um, so we appreciate. When I seen that, my eye, like I rolled over, like man, I went to show my wife, I'm like look at this, like it was just exciting <laughs> to, to see your love and support. Um, so for everybody that's ever supported, um, and believed in, um, what we're trying to do, I just thank you all. I probably miss some people, but I, it's not charges to my head and I'm a heart. <laughs> no, it's only right. So let the people know where they can find you, where they can purchase crossover wizard how they can get uh, in touch with you, how they can uh, contribute to the foundation. It is a 501c3, so, yes. you know, you're supporting the youth. Um, uh, he's located in North Carolina, so go ahead and plug your, your information for them. Uh, so Crossover Wizard, that is available for, for purchase at uh, $14.99 on our website, crossoverwizard.com. Um, our Instagram is crossover, X-O-V-E-R underscore wizard, W-I-Z-A-R-D. Um, same with Twitter. Um, and on Facebook. Um, for FAT, uh, our website is fatnc.weebly.com. Um, and you could donate there. We haven't opened a donation link up for this summer. Um, but, you know, anything, everything that's, that's sent to us, we figure out a way to get it to the kids. Um, like, it's, like you said, it's a 501c3 um, donation and you get a receipt. You can write it off for your taxes. Um, and we just thank everybody for the support and thank y'all for having me on. This is awesome. It's pretty no, cool. No, we thank we thank you for coming on. I mean, when I I uh I brought uh Brains Beating Bank back. I started it in twenty twenty nineteen and uh COVID happened, the life happened, and I'm like, this is the perfect time to bring it back. And and I um I started it because uh I was in my feelings <laughs> when I was uh really going at uh going and dealt with just a sip and I just started realizing like there were so many outlets that were um, uh, putting uh, brands that's already made their millions on a platform and it's like you know yeah. there's the little guys that's still out here grinding and busting it out like yeah. you know they they need a platform as well they need um, someone to acknowledge them so yeah. it was it was uh, an anger in my heart that flourished into a beautiful flower so it was like this is my way of giving back to those that I that I see, and that's my way of saying I see you. So um, thank, thank you for coming on. We we appreciate you um, coming on and sharing your story, your platform, and we can't wait to see a crossover with their in stores. Okay, 